This will act just like goose down. Got two handfuls from that big one. Just stuff it all the way. It's already getting puffy. It's starting to rain, so I might get lucky. This is gonna be great. Right on. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. There we go. Oh. Greg Ovens here, Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. So, in this video, I'm going to make an overnight debris shelter. And also, I'm going to take this summer coat, which has no insulation value, and show you how you can make a winter coat out of a summer coat using cattails. This acts just like down, like goose down. It's starting to get windy and cold. This is the Rocky Mountains. It's starting to snow. Got to find a place for a debris shelter. But the first thing is to winterize this coat because it's getting cold there's nothing to this coat I don't even want to take it off to show you but I will and then I'll tell you a little little story about an adventure I had but there's nothing to this coat this is uh, towards the end of March last week of March but here in the Rockies it's still about 10 below freezing at night and actually it looks like I chose perfect weather to do this video because it's gonna get cold and it looks like it's gonna snow that's really what I wanted to to be able to uh, do this during you know adverse weather conditions winterize the coat make a debris shelter so there's some cattails all through this swamp here we're gonna collect a bunch of those first off I'm going to need a lot more than this though. We're going to have to keep picking them. Tell you what, <laughs> the wind's blowing my seeds away. I got, I got to try to keep these out of the wind. It's cold out, but I wanted to show you. I took one of the uh, smaller cattail heads that I found, and I want to try to show you. These are compact. The seeds, when you scrape them with your finger, I'll show you how much you get out of one little cattail head. Once that's all off, even a small one, lots. Once you break them apart, this will act just like goose down. Funny, just like that, the uh, wind is dying down and the sun's coming out. So. Like they say, if you don't like the weather in the Rockies, just wait five minutes. So now, basically, I can, it's a less, less windy here, and everywhere I go, branches attack me. I'm kind of in this little gully, but basically, 
the coat has two layers. Like I say, there's not much to it. It has an outer layer, it's a rain coat, and an inner layer. So basically, I'm going to take my knife, make an incision in the top, big enough for my hand, so when I'm pulling the seeds out, or I can get my hand down in there and scrape them, and get this coat full of those seeds. Maybe you're in an area that doesn't have cattail. You don't have to use cattail, although I find it's probably one of the better materials to use. But you can just use grass. Or you can use debris like leaves. You can use certain needles from the trees. Pine needles, they tend to poke through and it'll be very uncomfortable. You'll regret that. But fir needles, you soft needle trees. Anything to insulate your body heat between the two layers of the coat. Push it down as far as you can into the arms. You're going to get seeds all over the place, but it's about the warm coat. They'll be on me. Now you'd be surprised how warm this coat will be after I get this filled. That's what we're going to do, and you'll see the difference when I get it done, how thin it was to how thick it'll be. And we'll just keep shoving these seeds way down in the arms, down the back. The wind doesn't help for getting seeds all over, but if you're trying to keep warm in a survival situation, this is what you're going to do. But I promised you a story. So this was quite a few years back. A friend and myself uh, set up a hunting camp way out in a remote area. We did this the one weekend and the plan was the following weekend we we're going to go hunting together. So we chopped wood, made a fire pit, made a little trail into where we wanted this bush camp. Following weekend, I'm heading to the camp and I'm driving along, had an old 79 Bronco, hit some potholes, truck just died. So okay, I'm thinking, well, I've got enough daylight to get to the camp, I'll hike there. I couldn't figure, I spent some time trying to figure out what was wrong with the truck and I couldn't figure it out. But anyway, what I did was I decided to hike to the camp. Now, I didn't bother carrying my rifle and I didn't even bring my coat because it was warm, sunny September day. But this story will uh, give you a little example of things that you want to do and things you shouldn't do. So I hiked to the camp, which was about 8 miles or 16 kilometers or something. And as I'm getting closer, within half the distance, now it's starting to get dark. The sun's gone behind the mountain. And the clouds start rolling in. And what does it do? It starts to rain. And, of course, when I left it was beautiful and sunny, so I never brought my coat. Never go unprepared. I've been unprepared so many times. That's why I can tell you these stories about what to do and what not to do. I should have brought that coat and my rifle, as you'll see as the story goes on. So I get to the part where we had cut a trail into the camp. By now it's pitch black and I did have a lighter. I'm flicking the lighter just to see the trail. I get to uh, where the fire pit was and where he had his trailer set up and he's not even there. Now it's pitch black, raining, and my buddy wasn't even there. So, I did start a fire. I searched with my lighter again through the forest there to try to find firewood, which I did. And as I'm trying to get the fire going, and it was difficult because it was pouring rain by now. No coat, great situation. And, Around the fire pit, I can see now that I'm flicking my lighter trying to get the fire going, grizzly bear tracks all around the fire pit in the mud. Probably, I would say 10 inch grizzly tracks, a pretty big bear. So I did get the fire going and I ended up spending the night huddled against the 
rocks as they warmed up just to uh, survive, basically. I was soaking wet, but I was warm enough that I made it through the night. So, anyway, I did hike back the next day, but during that night, there was noises in the bush, and I sure wish I had brought my rifle then. Uh, these are things you, you rely on people, or you think... You know, I was anticipating he was there. I'd get a ride back to my truck to get my gear, my bedding, my coat. Never happened. That was probably the most miserable night and terrifying night that I've ever had in my uh, career in the bush. It was scary because there was noises in the bush and I was thinking it could be that big bear. It could have been a moose or an elk or something else as well. I mean, fortunately... The bear never came into camp. He was in the area, so it was a terrifying night, but also bitterly cold and absolutely terrible situation without the coat and, and that. But anyways, we're working on making this coat, and uh, then we got to find a spot for our debris shelter. I just thought I'd share another story with you because some people have commented that they liked the stories when I went to visit Zach. But once in a while, I'll try to tell you a true story, and, and the moral of the story is... If you don't make it, it's your own damn vault. Don't leave stuff behind in your vehicle if you're trying to go somewhere or hike somewhere. You could put your life in jeopardy by not being prepared. And actually, the safest place to be is with your vehicle in a situation. But things can go bad. I anticipated my buddy would be there, and he wasn't. That was a scary time. Sure get a lot of seeds on just one cattail head. I don't know how many I have here, quite a few. Enough to fill the coat. Two handfuls from that big one. And just stuff it all the way. It's already getting puffy. But I actually had to make two incisions, one at each arm and the back, because they're separate. Okay, I got the one arm full of the seeds. And look at this. It even holds itself up. This one, nothing. Nothing there. So, just got to fill the rest of the coat. Hopefully I can get it on. But, this is going to insulate me. Okay, we got the coat filled. Now she's all puffy. You can tell the difference. I don't need it right now. Start and look for a debris shelter. It's supposed to snow, and it is going to get cold, but now I'm prepared. You know how fluffy that is now. I took almost all the cattail. I had a couple left over, that's about it. So, I couldn't tell you that story without actually bringing the gun and the coat. So I'm prepared. I did bring a saw, one of these uh, Agua Canyon saws that Zach gave me. I've got my ferro rod and a knife. That's what I brought. I didn't bring any food and I hope it snows tonight so you can see how the debris shelter works. Okay, I think this is the spot right here. This looks good. That tree is solid. The one that's leaning between the two big ones. It won't take much to block the back off. And also, this is what I look for when I'm building a debris shelter as well. There's lots of firewood around. We're out of the snow, the ground looks dry. We're good to go. I'm only cutting dead trees for my poles and then when I cut the uh, boughs from the other trees I'm just going to take a couple of branches off each tree so that I don't kill the trees.
Now, you'll notice one thing. I haven't broken a lot of the branches off the tree itself. Because when I put my boughs, I can weave them through the branches and get them to stay easier too. This is a blowdown tree, so I can take whatever I want off this. But keep in mind, this is just a video because I'm building this shelter. I'm being a conservationist. If you're in a life and death situation, you're not gonna worry about the tree. You worry about you. Anyway, I hear a grouse drumming behind us too. This is mating time for the rough grouse. Funny thing with these grouse is they use the same stump or log every year when they're mating and drumming. Get the shelter done, spend a night, and it'll be far more comfortable night than that night. That night from hell. That's what that was. Worst night of my life. Okay, let's get on this. Yeah, I've been using Zach's shovel quite a bit lately. It is pretty handy for starting fires even. Just want to clear some of these out of the way. Just the bottom side. I don't care about the top side. Just where it's going to be poking me and whatever. I was thinking of trying to throw this into a tree like Zach was doing. Make a nice spot for a bed, even though I got no bedding. Should be good. Well, had my uh, back turned to the camera when I was working on it, and I guess the back of the log knocked the camera over. Well, these are the things that happen to me a lot. The idea is once now that I have my main structure, I can just weave all my boughs in and out and wherever I think I need them. This side I have to block in. The wind's coming from this direction. And you see how these branches, or boughs, will just weave them in and they start creating a structure and start blocking everything in. And you just have to weave them through and they stay. It's, uh, I love debris shelters. It's already getting closed in, which is kind of nice. Okay, so there's something I neglected to mention which I'm going to show you right now is I mean I got a great spot between these two trees and this leaning tree my poles they're nice and secure to these thick branches on the leaning tree but what you want to make sure that you do is when you start your structure make sure you use your long thick branches first you know because that creates more strength shove them in you want the strength from the big long branches first and the other thing once you've got your strong structure with your smaller ones you don't just want to put them on top like if I just leave that like that we get a big wind gone you still want to weave them in somewhere where they're gonna stay and even if it rains, I don't think this thing will leak. It's going to be good. making me hungry
the shelter's done and I like it it's awesome um, it's starting to rain so I might get lucky this would be great so I can show you in the morning how dry it's going to be under here I'm confident that this is not going to leak it's like a little beehive I created around these three trees um, it's going to be good I'll have a little fire soon but no bedding got my warm coat so I'm not worried about that I've got a nice dry place to sleep it's going to be awesome it's really awesome in there I'm not kidding you and I know because of these big trees it's not going to leak I'm thinking about five hours to uh, put this all together but if five hours is going to save your life keep you from getting hypothermia I think five-hour investments not bad well I tell you what I'm looking forward to this and it is starting to rain I hope it pours tonight this will be good so then I can show you how efficient a shelter like this can be for the sake of a few hours invested time um, one thing I should mention you don't want to have your fire too close to a shelter like this. If uh, this thing catches on fire, it'll go up like a Roman candle. The shelter's on fire. I'm going to have my fire out at least maybe 15 feet from the shelter. This is going to be great. I think I'm going to sleep like a baby. Right on. I'm happy, man. I'm happy. Cover photos. So I'm ready for bed. Now I'll get to uh, put the coat on, make sure I can get it on. I filled it pretty full. Should be able to get it on. It's a little tight, but it's going to be warm. <laughs> kind of funny. Kind of look like. Uh, it's so puffy. It's going to be good. But I'll see you in the morning. See if I can zip this thing up. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, huh. This is going to be good. I was warm, but it didn't rain like I wanted. It rained a couple of times during the night, but not like I wanted. I, I was hoping for a big snowfall or a rain all night so I could show you the efficiency of the shelter. But anyway, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found it entertaining and informative. The shelter was awesome, just like you guys, the viewers are awesome. Because of you, I can stay out, do videos all summer. I'm going to get on another video today, as a matter of fact. I think we're going to go look for grizzly bears. Sounds like a plan. But anyways, thanks for watching Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. Like I say, I hope you learned something. And keep your eye out for new videos. And like, share, subscribe. You're the folks that are uh, keeping this channel going. Thank you to all the viewers. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, I get a lot of comments every video, and don't think if I don't respond or answer your question that I don't appreciate your views, your likes, and comments. Because of you, I can keep doing these videos this summer. I love the support. appreciate you all. And let's go look for some grizzly bears.